This is a, a roll of sill, 3686 trisome. This is a certified media on the 500 series latex. And I downloaded the preset, the certified preset, and at the very front of the print, I have these scratches. And the scratches are right there in the center. Now the way I ran this job, you see I have my smile cut in. The way I ran this job on a 500 series is I load it onto the printer. I do not print back from the pinch rollers. And the reason why I don't is because there's an entryway into the curing tunnel. And I want to make sure, especially with some papers, they may have a little bit of a curl to them. And there's always the possibility that as they go into the curing tunnel, there's a little ridge right there that it, they could drop into it and it would cause it to come up, not slide uh, perfectly into the tunnel. And then as a result, I would have a head strike. So I roll it out into the curing tunnel, probably two, three inches. And then I lift the door to the curing tunnel. And then I send the job. What I discovered was printing that way, it would roll down, go through the door, and then as the first prints would come out, I would see these little scratches right in the center. So I looked back to the carriage where the printer uh, head was going, and everything looks flawless. So the issue is happening in the curing tunnel where the media has come up a little bit and it is touching right in the middle and scraping and causing the prints to be damaged. So the first part of these prints were unsaleable. Now as the media went forward, the weight of the paper dropped down a bit and then it stopped doing it. Now I don't want to have to roll the media that far down to start printing. If you put it on a take-up roll, it doesn't do it. So if you rolled it down and put it on a take-up roll, there's a little roller right there at the end of the curing tunnel, and this particular paper, every paper is different, benefits from that take-up reel and the curve on that roller, and it will pull it down, and it doesn't happen. So if you rolled it out and put it on a take-up roll and started printing, no issues. If you started printing without the take-up reel, without rolling out a bit, you will get these little scratches on the front. Now, if you didn't roll it, if you didn't run it long enough, you would assume something is wrong, it's going to keep scratching and stop the print. If it got enough weight on the bottom, or as it's running, you were to put it on a take-up roll, this would go away, but you would lose your first prints. I'm mentioning this because this is something unique to the 500. The 500, some materials, paper especially, performs better with the take-up reel than without. And some materials, they perform better without the take-up reel. And once you put the take-up reel on, it can pose some challenges. So you may have two papers made by the same company of different SKUs in which one of them, no take-up roll, runs fine. Put it on the take-up roll. What happens is right at the end of the carriage in the print zone, you see a little pocket forming. That pocket carriage kind of rubs against it and you get a little scratch right there. Other papers like this one, it's the complete opposite. You put it on the take-up roll and everything is fine and then when you don't put it on the take-up roll and run just a one-off, you have these little scratches there and that's happening from the curing tunnel. In both cases, the best way to address the issue is lower the temperature and if necessary, reduce the amount of ink. So if you were printing at 10 paths, 110% density, at 200 degrees, I would go to 12, 100% density at 190 or 185 degrees. And you can also use the interpass delay to address this issue as well. That's going to give you a little more dwell time and allow you to reduce the temperature. Once you find a temperature and a density, and density in this case really is reducing the amount of liquid, and in this particular liquid is water. You're reducing the amount of water that's landing on the paper. 
And all papers take the amount of liquidity differently. And it really depends on that balance. It is a, the amount of heat and the amount of liquid. What you're doing, the speed, is adjusting for those factors. And in many cases, as you lower the temperature, you have to run a little slower. So the solution to this for me was to simply lower the temperature, slow it down a bit, use an inner, and then debate, do I want to reduce density? If I can get away with it and it doesn't need to reduce the density, that's wonderful. Because I don't want to reduce the ink. That's where my uh, color gamut is. But going from 110 to 100 or 190 at noticeable. Start noticing as you go to 80. And you're going to definitely notice at 70 or 60. If possible, I want to print with 100. But if that's not possible, even with lowering the temperature, because you've got to lower the temperature and reduce the amount of ink, that's the nature and the composition of that particular paper. In this case, it was just a simple adjustment. Everything went fine. But I wanted to explain what happened and why it happened so you understand the nature of the 500 printer. The 365 and the 335, 315 are very similar in the way they work. It's just a little bit different because their take-up system is not the same. It doesn't have the same angle to it. It doesn't have the roller at the end of it. And it also doesn't have the same curing tunnel. That's a little different on those printers. So the 500 does have its own unique sort of fingerprint as opposed to the 300 series, which is a little different. The 300, from my experience, handles paper a little bit, just marginally better. And a lot of that has to do with a different uh, print zone and also a different curing zone. Both handle the paper. They will do it. It will work. But it may not work at the settings that you've chosen. And I'm explaining here why those settings may have to be adjusted in some cases. Keep in mind, too, that your environment may be different than mine. I have an almost ideal balance of temperature and humidity. If you have a lot more humidity, if you have paper that is impregnated with a lot of humidity because it's in the air, that could definitely make a difference because now you have more water that's in the paper itself that needs to be removed and your settings may differ a little bit than they would ordinarily working from a certain threshold of temperature and humidity. Paper, adjustments, how to do it. Uh, I'll be making a lot more videos on paper. I think paper is something that um, is, can be challenging for people. And these little nuances hopefully will help. And don't panic. There's almost always a solution. It just really comes down to speed and your temperature and your ink load.